Thanks. Great. So it's a great pleasure to be here uh, in front of such an esteemed audience. Hope you're going to enjoy the, the talk. So we're going to talk about verification of Scala programs using stainless. A um, couple words about me. Uh, so I'm Roman Ritchie. You can find me under uh, Romac on Twitter. Uh, I was a student here, and now I work at Lara with uh, Professor uh, Kunchak. So we're going to discuss a few different things. Uh, I'm going to present stainless. Uh, explain quickly what verification is about, a few all termination, and then the main piece is uh, verifying type classes. Um, then we'll see a few more case studies, uh, little bonus features, and I'll talk about some of the further work we like to do with stainless. Um, so stainless is a verification tool for um, programs written in Scala, or a, pure, a subset of Scala named, that we call pure Scala. We think it's a fairly expressive subset already, so you have this whole uh, bunch of features here. I won't go over all of them. Um, but yeah, you can see it's already fairly expressive. You can write m many, many types of program with that. And uh, as long as you don't use too many fancy types of features, you should be, should be fine. Uh, one thing that's notably missing here, what is coming soon, hopefully, is uh, hiring edit types. Uh, I'm currently working on, on the support, so uh, you can follow the GitHub repository and uh, be notified when we get this in. Uh, we also support some uh, of the dotty features, such as uh, dependent function types, extension methods, and <coughs> opaque types. But we're currently stuck on dotty 0.12. We haven't had time to uh, upgrade to latest dotty, but that's definitely something we want to look at. Um, so stainless work in the following way. So we either uh, call into Scala C or dot C to parse and type check the programs. Then we extract these programs into our own internal AST, which we then lower down to uh, a much simpler language uh, from which we generate some efficient conditions that are then passed to Inox, which is a, a, a solver that does the, a lot of heavy lifting for us and then uh, itself calls into Z3 or CBC4 princess, which are SMT solvers. Um, uh, so we're getting the lowering. Um, there's a bunch of uh, small phases within stainless that deal with stuff such as uh, inner classes, laws, super calls, method lifting. Uh, we also encode types. Uh, if you have complicated types, we have to encode them down to much simpler types that uh, Inox will understand, and, and so on. So uh, the ones I put in bold are the ones that are going to be used by the examples um, I'm going to uh, present. Regarding Inox, uh, so Inox is a solver for uh, functional programs but understands a much simpler language than the, than the Scala language. So we have functions, no classes, only LETs. You have bit vectors, sets, multimap, uh, quantifiers such as for all or exist, and dependent and common types. So underneath, we use some quite fancy types, but um, that we use to encode some, uh, some of the more uh, Scala-like types. So I won't go into what Inox really does. It's a lot of magic. Uh, <laughs> and heavy lifting, but basically Inox uh, has the, the, this procedure that helps us um, reason about recursive functions and, and things like this. So on the verification side, uh, what uh, Stainless allows us to, to check are uh, some assertions using the standard assert key uh, function in Scala. We can also add post conditions to functions using the insurance keyword. We have precondition using require, and we can also have like class invariants on, uh, on classes where you can put require within the body of a class, and we'll check that this uh, variant is always uh, true. Quick example, that, that's the only uh, uh, math uh, equation I'm going to show. So if you have a function f that takes an, an x of type a and returns a b, you can add this precondition using require, write the body of the function, and then add the post condition using ensuring. And basically what we're going to try to do afterwards is try to prove the following equation uh, is always true for any x whatsoever, even if it's an infinite domain like big int. So here we say that um, the precondition where you substitute x inside must imply the postcondition applied to the body of the function. So that's basically what stainless is about, is about generating such uh, verification conditions that are then discharged by the INOX solver itself. We also have some static checks as well, uh, which are also discharged by the solver, such as uh, pattern matching exhaustiveness, and we handle guards as well, which is not done usually by uh, compilers otherwise. Division by zeros are checked, array bounds, map domain checks, 
And a few more things also, like we don't allow creating null values. We, we only allow fully initialized variables and fields. We don't support exceptions. And more importantly, we check underflows and overflows on uh, side integer types. There's also a termination checker that comes with stainless. Uh, it's pretty powerful and supports uh, user-defined measures, uh, control for analysis, such as size and so on. I won't go into details about termination, but it's important for both for your program correctness, but also for proofs. When you write proofs in stainless, you want the proofs to terminate. Otherwise, you can basically prove anything you want. Um, just an example of a, a broken uh, append function on list. So here I made the mistake of passing uh, L again, the recursive call, which basically means that Appen will loop uh, forever. And the machine checker can uh, see that and will give us an example. Okay, if you pass this list, uh, which is a cons of A and another N nil, and nil as R, then your function will loop forever. And uh, so this can help, uh, help you debug <coughs> Um, and figure out why the function is not terminating. Um, all right, main piece of the talk is the verification of type classes. Uh, we've heard a lot about them already, so I won't go into uh, uh, detail about why they're important or why you should care or why not. I think we all know that uh, they're important and that we should care. So here I have the standard uh, semi-group type class we've seen many times already. The main difference here is that we can express what's the associativity law for the semi-group directly within the, the type class itself, the definition of the type class. And we use this at low annotation that comes from the stainless library to instruct stainless that, okay, this is a law, you're gonna have to check it, check that this, this law holds for, um, for every instance of the semi-group type class. Uh, you can also extend semi-group uh, and define the monoid, this is supported as well. You can, so you add the empty op operator and you can add a couple more laws that have to hold for monoids, such as left and right identity of empty with respect to combine. So this is very natural, this is like a really natural scalar code. Um, I mean, you could, uh, it's compatible with some, almost the way you express those in cats and so on, so uh, it's, a, it's a nice DSL. Uh, so now, whenever you want to define an instance, here I'm defining an instance for uh, sum. What happens here is that uh, stainless will automatically verify that the, law, the, the laws hold for, um, for sum. Uh, you don't have to do anything special about that. Stainless will check it for you. Um, so it will generate something that looks like this. That's the refresh condition that expressed in the language of Inox. And it will pass this down to Inox that's going to try to prove that this is true. So, You'll see here, if you squint a bit, that we have uh, some refinement types and so on that we use to uh, reason about uh, these uh, scalar types which are not supported by the SMT solver itself. And then Inox does, does some magic down the road to, to, get, to remove those. Um, and what you get back if you run stainless on this, you're gonna get these three VCs for laws. It's gonna tell you that, uh, of course, these are valid because uh, sum is a proper um, monoid. It's fairly fast, I mean, it's not like crazy fast, but it's, uh, it's fast enough for, um, for having a good, um, good development cycle, uh, I think. You can also define a more uh, interesting uh, monoid, so the, such as the one on option. For this, you need to have a semi-group on the underlying A that's within the, the option, which you, you can then use when you want to combine the two, um, the two sum values. Um, Unfortunately, here, uh, stainless will not be able to prove that the laws hold uh, for, this, for this instance automatically. We have to actually use the fact that uh, the combined operation on the semi-group is itself associative, uh, which we can do by, we can, in the same definition, we can override the law assess method, which, which we defined in the, in the semi-group uh, abstract class. We call super, we use this little because keyword, which is just a keyword from the, our library, and then we say, okay, whenever X, Y, and Z are all sums, you can use the fact that uh, the combined operation on those is itself associative. And if you do this, then uh, stainless will be able to prove that uh, this is indeed associative. Um, I think I'm missing a slide, but yeah, well, I need to show also that uh, Stainless can also do proof by induction. So if you define the semi-group instance for list, um, which is just uh, 
plus plus, so uh, this happened. Uh, you can instruct stainless to do the proof by induction, and it's going to basically try to automatically do a proof. So if x is nil, then it's very easy by just unfolding lower source, you can see that the append operation uh, is associative. And then it can also perform the inductive step in the case where the first uh, argument is a cons. And then you can basically find the, the proof you would write by hand if you had to prove the law, the law yourself. So we have also inductive reasoning built into, into stainless. Um, so once you have this, you can define, for example, the full map uh, function, and you can full map a list and some some of the elements. Uh, so this is so this is code that stainless will, will support, and uh, uh, you can use as such. But now maybe you want to do something a bit more interesting, such as doing this fold in parallel. Um, fortunately, stainless doesn't really understand. Uh, we don't have support for scalar parallel collections. So what you have to do here is you define the parfold map method. You convert our uh, own list to a scalar list. You call par. You do the mapping and the fold. And this gives you back an M. But because stainless doesn't understand this dot par operator, you have to use this at excellent notation on the function, which tells stainless, OK, you don't have to care about the body. You can just uh, trust that the post condition we added here uh, will always hold. So now here we're telling stainless, you, you have to know that the result of this function is the same as uh, calling the regular sequential fold map. So that's the thing. If you deal with some code that we don't support, you have sometimes to kind of convince yourself that the post condition you're writing will always hold. And, uh, but this lets you actually interact with, uh, with, with other libraries. It could be Akka, you could uh, uh, try map the Java collection, other Scala collections. So you can always try to wrap them in some extent functions and then add post conditions to, to tell stainless a bit about what this function is doing. Um, so that was for uh, type classes. Uh, we have a bunch of other case studies I'd like to mention as well. Uh, the standards doesn't only do type class laws uh, verification. For example, we verified uh, a concrop implementation, which is a data structure that's used uh, for data parallel operation. Uh, you can think of it as a, it's a list, but with a good, um, uh, with good operation and, and good performance for lookup, updates, and especially append and prepend. Um, and so using this, we also implemented, the student of us implemented a fully parallel and verified MapReduce pipeline that uses the monoid, that uses these conch groups, and so on. And then you get a fully verified uh, parallel uh, pipeline. Um, Jadam Zay, Romain Juffer from the lab are also maintaining a, a fork of stainless we call SMART which supports writing smart contracts in Scala, if that's your sort of thing. And here you can write your contracts, you can reason about this uint 256 data type, which is, very, uh, which is used in Solidity, for example, which you can then generate from Scala. You can generate Solidity code that you can then deploy on Ethereum per se uh, itself. Uh, it's available on GitHub at this uh, URL. And at last, we can also reason a bit about actor systems. Uh, so the one I'm going to show here is a little uh, counter with a backup counter. So we have the first primary counter, which is at zero. It receives an ink message. It updates its states to the counter to one, and in sentence, it, it transfers the message back to the backup counter, which then uh, updates its states to, to one itself. So this we can model using this little um, DSL we devised, which was a bit inspired by ACA typed, but without the typed part, because we didn't support uh, uh, the type messages yet, but this could, uh, could be done nowadays. Um, so here I define the primary actor, uh, which has a counter and a reference to the backup counter. And whenever it gets an ink message, it sends the message to the backup counter and, and update its states with the counter incremented by one. The backup counter just does the, the ladder, it just updates its states uh, and increment the counter. And now we can define an invariant of the system. So what, what we'd like to, to say is that something that must be true at all time with this system is that the value of the primary counter must be equal to the value of the backup counter. Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. So this is the backup counter, so it also has a counter. And whenever it gets an ink message, it's just going to uh, increment the, the value of the counter itself. Uh, what Pramari was doing, it was the same. He was just also s uh, sending the, the message to the, um, to the backup counter. 
And so what happens now is that basically the value of the primary counter is always going to be equal to the value of the backup counter plus the number of messages that are sent but not yet processed by the, by the actor. So that's the invariant we'd like to state, uh, which you can do in, in this way. And now we want to show that this is true at every step of the system's execution. So we can write a little theorem like this that says that for such an actor system and two uh, references to uh, two actors, if the invariant was already true for the system, if we take a step and send the message from N to M, where N and M can be any actors, can be primary and backup, can be primary in itself, and so on, so in, whatever happens, we'd like the invariant to hold after the message has been delivered. Um, and if you give this to, to stainless, uh, it should be able to prove automatically that uh, this is indeed true and holds in every, for every state of the system. We also have to prove that there is some initial system where this is true as well. And this, is, this gives you basically a proof by induction that uh, the, the invariance is maintained at every step of the execution of the system. We also have a little wrapper that you can use to run such actors directly on top of ACA, um, which is nice as well. You don't have to rewrite your code uh, for ACA specifically. Uh, we could also imagine uh, having some deeper integration with ACA, but that hasn't been done yet. Um, and we have a bunch more code um, in the Bolts repository on GitHub. For example, we have a verified movement code implementation, we have a reachability check implementation, and of course we have left pad because uh, no verified fiction system is complete without a left pad implementation. Um, and then as a little bonus, uh, we actually have, if you use our dotty front end, we have support for uh, uh, source level uh, refinement types. So we didn't touch the typer of Dotty, we just added some support for the syntax, and we then deal ourselves with these refinements uh, within stainless. So if you like refinement types, you can use those, and uh, you can write them using uh, our Dotty frontend. Um, you can find the fork at uh, pflara slash Dotty. So an example of that would be, you have a sorted insert function that inserts an element into a list, and here we require that the list we're, we're given is already sorted, and that the element must be smaller than the head of the list if the list is not empty. And then we assert that the result of the operation is a sorted list itself. So here I put the two versions, the one with the require and ensuring, and on top you have the one with refinements. Uh, whichever is better, I mean, is a matter of taste. Uh, you can basically uh, pick and choose uh, in that case. We have a few more things. So we currently have an, we have an SBT in the compiler plugin, which metas integration, but it's currently broken. Since we are ready to Scala 2.12, we have to do some work to fix that. Shouldn't be too hard, but uh, hasn't been done yet. We support uh, ghost context, which is a bit like dot is arrays term, but a bit more powerful in general. You can stuck, uh, stick the ghost notation in, in more place than the arrays keyword. We can also do partial evaluation of code, and we have a nice DSL for writing complicated proofs uh, as they might arise sometimes. Um, some features uh, I'd like to get in soon, especially the one that I think you're going to all like is the Harinkaji types implementation. Uh, it's, it's kind of halfway there, uh, a few more things to, to get done. Uh, refinement types are only supported at the top level of um, definition, so we, and they're not propagated in the, in the right way always, so this we'd like to improve as well. And we have a new uh, Perfection condition generator that's based on a type checking algorithm for a system that's called system FR, and uh, I think there's a reference uh, on the website to the paper. Um, and then later on, we'd like to also yeah, uh, support Scala 2, 213, latest Dotty, or um, yeah, the latest one we, at the time we're going to do this. I'm not sure we're going to have, we're going to be able to match every single release of Dotty, but we're going to do our best. And we've heard before about linear, uh, linearity and linear types. Uh, we had the linear, linearity checker uh, a few months back, but uh, I'd like to bring it back and, uh, and integrate it nicely with stainless. So we had a, a cool use case where you could write uh, basically term level session types, and using the linearity checker, you had basically the same guarantees that you would have in a language uh, with session types uh, and so on. So. This is going to hopefully come uh, later this year or early next year. Uh, so I'm just a small part of uh, uh, people that uh, have been working on this. It's a long-standing project, 10, 10 years old almost, or maybe more. 
Uh, and there's a bunch of people and PhD students and others who have uh, been working on it. I'd like to thank also our friends at the LAMP, at the Scala Center, and at Triple Coat for uh, their help and advice uh, uh, in, in many different uh, topics. Um, so if you want to learn more about Stainless, uh, we have a bunch more documentation online. You can find that stainless.tpfl.ch and it's going to teach you how to prove theorems, how to work with existing code. It's going to show some important features uh, we support as well. And there's a list of papers you can uh, check out if you want to uh, dive into the more technical details. Um, and that's all I have. Um, thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, we have a lot of time for questions in this talk. Hi. Thank you for the talk. It was great. Yeah. Uh, could you show the dot example again? That is what, before you introduce the SPD. Uh, this one. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. this one. Yeah, just to, to get more time to listen to this. So, how you uh, specified that? Oh yeah. So, so I, I, as I see you, you, you use the new, uh, the new, new union types here in. Uh, uh, no, no, it's no, not a union type actually. This, so the, what you have this here. X is a union type, or isn't it? Yeah, so this is syntax. So what it says, for example, for, uh, for uh, the x parameter of the function, it says x must be of type int, and then um, either the list is empty or that's a, standard, that's a standard term level expression. So this is just like xs is empty or x is smaller than the head of the list uh, if it's not empty. And, and for the return type, you have to give a name to the value you return. So that's why you have this uh, open... open um, Open brace has must be of type list of int, and then uh, we want the result to be sorted. So you can omit the name of the of the value in the uh, input parameters because we already have a name that's given by the by the parameter itself. So you don't have to uh, write it twice uh, always. And, yeah. Yeah, More questions. Not sure who was first, but we'll have time for everyone. I'm just curious, how much of the uh, verification machinery sticks around at runtime? Uh, actually, uh, you, you can basically, if you use the ghost uh, context feature we have, which, and uh, the soon to be working again SBT plugin, you can basically annotate everything that's a proof or things like this with at ghost, and they're going to be erased then afterwards. So you can have really like no overhead whatsoever. Uh, by default, when you use assert and sharing and require, those will also stay and, and be checked at runtime as well. But you can import uh, another version of these functions that uh, are marked as ghost and will just be erased as well. So you can basically have no runtime overhead whatsoever. Someone over there, I think. Diego? Uh, thank you, Lars. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, thank you very much for the talk. It's, um, it's very nice to see this, uh, all of this stuff about verification and SMT or being getting also into Scala as well. Um, I was a bit familiar with the work in, uh, well, seeing a few talks, that is to say, of. Uh, Liquid High School, so it's nice to see it also in uh, Scala as well. Um, one clarification. The example you mentioned before, it was one of the shorting ins. You also mentioned one of options. Is any of them uh, polymorphic? Because the, on, the one for sorting was with ints, list oh, yeah. of integers. Yeah, you, you could make it polymorphic if you, want, if you wanted to. Uh, um, for, for the sort, I mean, you, you could use... Uh, we, we have some of ECK, uh, total order, partial order, and so on. So you can use these... Uh, other type classes, like the standard one for ordering, to write uh, a polymorphic sort over uh, anything that can be sorted, basically. Uh. So is everything uh, statically proven and verified? Or yeah, uh, all of what I've shown is uh, statically verified, yeah. Okay, yeah, thanks. I was asking, so if you have, for instance, like a shorting on a, based with an order type class, mm -hmm. you can represent the fact that the, 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 like, it's sorted with respect to the order given that by that type class, right? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Okay. yeah. Which theory is that? that uh... Uh, from uh, theory from SMT, you mean? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it doesn't really, uh, it doesn't correspond to any uh, specific SMT theory in the sense that mm -hmm. if your instance of total order uses uh, is for begins, then you're going to use the, the, the integral arithmetic theory, but you could write this for an ADT, you're going to use the ADT theory, and I mean, th there's a lot of encoding that, that goes on behind the scenes between what you, what you see here and what the SMT solvers see, so uh, it doesn't always map to a specific theory. It can be a combination of different theories as well, or you could have, so it depends. One more question. You have mentioned that you have verified a concurrent data structure with some uh, worst time, logarithmic, and, lim yep. and constant time. You mean that you have verified the bounds of... Uh, no, we haven't verified the bounds. Uh, in a predecessor of stainless that's called Leon, we, we used to have, uh, and we still have in the, in the code base, and you can, you can run it, we, we had a resource bound uh, analysis and, and, and things like this. So this we haven't done for this specific data structure, or maybe it was, maybe there is this benchmark in the, in the Leon. Just control the very type of resource bound as well. Okay, yeah, all right. Okay, we can take more. One more question, I think. I think there was someone in the front, also. Thank you for your talk. Uh, I was looking for documentation of this stainless now because I, I was not aware of this project. Uh, in the beginning, I looked that it looks like similar Scala style, something like that, and it should be somewhere to configure your uh, some rules. Uh, for example, there is something not allowed to uh, mention that uh, you are not allowed to have uninitialized methods. For example, we use mostly in the beginning of the project three question marks, something like that, uh, or underscores in the body of the yep. class, and we change this. So is there any uh, option to um, disable these rules or something like that? And um, not at the moment. I mean, the, the, there's a few ways to customize what's happening with stainless, but not uh, on, the, on the supported features side. So. Uh, there's clearly no way to say, okay, uh, disable this check. Uh, you'd have to do it yourself by editing the, the, the code. Uh, but that's something that we could uh, add at some point. You can uh, also put an issue on GitHub if you want, to, if you want us to look into it, and uh, yeah, we can look at it. Um, so, uh, is, uh, is there, um, uh, so it will fail our project, or will it? Uh, I'm sorry? <laughs> so, uh, for example, if we have Scala style, uh, mm -hmm. so we will see some uh, linting uh, errors. It will not uh, uh, fail our project. We can run our project mm -hmm. uh, if we use Scala style. So, uh, is it uh, uh, add this some uh, add some compiler options to uh, uh, not uh, allow to compile or run our oh. project or? Um, well, if you, use, if you use stainless via the uh, SBT plugin, we basically, we just hook into the compiler and say, okay, give us the trees after typer. So then we, we don't stop the compilation phase. We just report uh, what we see. So that's not going to block the completion of the project. This is something you'd have to do by using Stella styles or something like this. Uh, I mean, that's the way it works currently. We could change this, but uh, yeah, for now, it's, uh, that's how it works. Yeah, kind of like that, yeah. All right. Let's thank Omar again.